Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Bill, how are you, mate? Hey, how are you, Hayden? Yeah, awesome. How are you? I'm well, I'm well. Thank you. Yeah. Mate, it's late for you. I'm sorry about this. No, okay. not at all. This oh, is apologize. this is actually our <laughs> usual time for doing this. Is it? Okay, yeah, nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. My oh, wife you, said she, I'm really good. My wife said the same. She goes, Are you late tonight? I said, No, this is this is the yeah. old the old regular time. Is it? Yeah. 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 For Hayden, for us it works in the West Coast because yeah. Yeah. You know, dinner's done, etc. For him, he's a night owl, so it doesn't really yeah. matter. Yeah, yeah, but for yeah. most of the guests, especially, you know, do you have young kids, right? I do, mate. Yeah, and so I wasn't you know, sure if uh, if they were going to be down in time for me to shoot out. I've got a we've got a common room where we live, so got it, got it. yeah. Ten minutes ago, I was getting Zave, my little boy, down, and I thought, is this going to happen? And then yeah. it's all of a sudden he just rolled over and went to sleep, and I quickly shot out the door. So yeah, uh, you, could, well. you could have always just texted. <laughs> oh yeah, you could have pinged us. Yeah, definitely. Hey, no, it worked out well. You wait. Yeah. No big deal. No big deal. No big deal. Yeah, it, it is kind of funny. We we uh, we landed on this time, and we've, we've been on this time, but I guess of late, we've done earlier We've been all episodes. over the place. Yeah, yeah. Different yeah. days, different yeah. times, daytime, yeah. afternoons. I mean, so I kind of I, – I don't mind mixing it up a little bit. What we really try to do is is just make sure we bury one a week. Yeah. Yeah. That's the key, isn't it? Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. staying consistent with it i like well, to be like because you're up too. to what what are you on 60 now i no. just recorded episode 60 today actually 60 wow. today okay yep okay, okay. yep yep and it's been one a week as well that was the that was sort of the cadence that i wanted to stick to and i've i've managed to maintain it which has been great that's pretty yeah. good because I mean, yeah. at least there's two of us so like we can push each other mate yes i know and you know there is quite a bit that goes on behind the scenes you know booking, i don't know that part booking that's... guests yeah well we don't all have a fill yeah. you know oh yeah you should try to <laughs> listen <laughs> Hayden, I appreciate you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Joe Rogan has a Jamie. Kenny Venucci has a Phil. I have a Phil. <laughs> yeah. And I'm, I'm, bare, I'm not even a Joe Rogan. No, not oh, yet. Oh, man, Joe Rogan. <laughs> I know, Joe he's killing Rogan. it at the moment, isn't he? he? He's killing it, but he's he feels a little unhinged. Like, I don't... You think? I don't love him. You know what I love about him? I Actually, what I love about all podcasters mm. is when you start to get into it, you find the ones that have been doing it a while, they've got a method, right? And yep. like the fastest that they can get from like the skin to the, from the rind all the way into the, the core mm -hmm. of the matter yep. is the most amazing parts of them, right? Like Joe Rogan's like that. He, um, sometimes he takes a while, but you get that sense that, as soon as he's got that gas, he's he's done the work to know yeah. where is the soft meaty parts that I gotta pick at, right? Like yeah, right. and they're all the good interviewers are like that, right? It's right. Mate, and interviewing an is such a skill. It is an art. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's the one thing that I I didn't really have such a um an understanding of until I started, you know, having conversations with people. Because, mm -hmm. you know, when you're out in the field in sales and you're having conversations with potential clients or, you know, you're building relationships with people, you do ask questions. And I feel like you really start to build relationships with people when you start to get to understand who they are on a personal level. And you can sort of put the work conversation on hold for five minutes and, and, you know, sort of get to know where they're from, who they are. And, and that's sort of how I like to start my conversations on the podcast. And they sort of naturally flow into the business end of the conversation pretty quickly. Yeah, but yeah, that, that sort of chit chat up front, it can become a little bit cheesy at first, but I think it's really important just to break the I personally the ice. like it. Yeah. I like yeah. it. I like the fact. Yeah. I don't know. I'd see me, to me, it just seems more friendly. That's it just I mean. seems like a nice yeah. way to roll into it. Yep. You're going to get down to the shit you need to get down mm -hmm. to. It's going to happen. What's, what, what's the rush? Yeah. I mean, what are we? We're not, yeah. you know, we're not old school reporters. We're not trying to uncover, you know, the truths of the planet. Yep. Maybe the CPG planet, but not necessarily the planet <laughs> in general, right? And it, it's a world of its own, isn't it? Uh, well, you better CPG. believe it. <laughs> CPG is its own. It's its own. It's its own thing. It's its own ecosystem almost, yeah. right? Like, yeah, yeah. yeah it's pretty but neat. it's bizarre. Once you're in, as you know, the three of us, once you're in, you're kind of, you're kind of stuck, right? It, the like same you never, names, you the same names keep dropping up. Yeah. All the time. And it, everybody, yeah. everybody who leaves or tries to leave, it just seems to have got this gravitational pull mm -hmm. back to CPG because well, it's kind of fun, right? It's interesting. Well, I'm yeah. like that, right? Like, you you know, I, I, I was in CPG for a very long time, um, got out, went to startup you know, startup was a retail startup. And then even when I left retail startup, mm -hmm. went to something like biometrics, I came mm -hmm. back, right? Mm -hmm. And the pull is, you're right, it's the pull is always there. And 
um, even though startup life is like this really exciting, you know, people are raising rounds and all this stuff. Uh, you know, I really love the retail. Like at the, at the end of the day, it's it's the retail stuff that really it draws, that's, right? That's like, my thing too. I like I like I like it. I like the buying and selling. I love the talk. Yeah. You know. It's yeah. all good, man. Yeah. I hear. Yeah, it was interesting when I was at the lunch the other day when I saw you, Kenny. Like yeah. there were so many familiar faces there. I wasn't expecting that. You know, I was quite surprised. Oh my surprised. god, it's the, it's the same yeah. people all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, yeah. and it's good though because it's it it's it's a bizarre family if you look at it. Like especially at that group, like you look at um, yeah, Richard Trevor Baker. Like, yeah, Richard. Well, uh, you know, Richard's been around for seven years. Joe yeah. Brand, seven years. Peter Hahn. Yeah, like you got all these guys have been around forever, and then you got the whole next sort of younger guys. Um, I won't put me in that group, but Trevor and the below Jordan, you yep. now, yeah, you know, um, Kobe. You got so many people. Mm -hmm. Like it just, and it seems to actually. It, I bet you, I tell you the truth. If you, if I think, if you talk to some of the old. Old days. Yeah, but. The new group, I th I think the old guys love it because the the dynamics change, the the conversations change, CPG has changed, retail has changed, mm -hmm. right? I just find it fascinating. I, I do. I, I really love going to the events. I just like catching up with everybody. Yeah. So I mean, with you being in the industry for so long, you know, you've got the the history of being a buyer and so on. How quickly has the industry moved, in your opinion? Like, you know certain laws and certain rules and certain things stay the same like that and they'll never change but then the industry does shift and it's moving quite quickly and i guess over the past two years or since COVID's sort of been in our life it's even changed even more but you know how do you think everybody's managed main able to maintain and keep up with with the progress and with what's i wonder going if on? they actually have and i think yeah. sometimes phil and i talk about that is that when you look at it how have they kept up because i think the pro the, the difference was with COVID, especially right now is even if you were mediocre and could keep the doors open, right? Remember, Ontario is different than what we were hating in the yeah, West. The West stayed open. If yeah. you could keep your doors open, you probably still had a crack. Yeah. But as this goes on, I don't think that's going to hold true anymore. I think you really had to have some point of difference. Mm. You know, I, 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 I mean, I, I still, still shop Costco and I shop a lot of these other places. I shop a lot of small people because I like them. Yeah. But uh, unless they really could stay fully open, old school, they had to really morph into the pick, you know, like um, pick up in store. They had to do deliver. Like Saban's done a lot more delivery. They, mm -hmm. I mean, I, we were doing that anyway, but this pushed it. Spud got pushed. Like, Spit it up. you know, but I yeah. think there's a lot of them. I don't think the attrition has even started mm -hmm. in normal retail because they closed. Yeah. They couldn't get back too far. Uh, yeah. Has had its. Um, a lot of these people yeah. i really don't i think there's a i think once we get out of this shit it's gonna be interesting so we talked about i think yesterday phil or day before what where consumers are yeah. gonna go like how is this gonna go now that we're getting out are we gonna go back to stores is online online will always be there we know that but is it gonna be as big as it was the last 20 months does it mellow out are people mm. tired of sending 50 packages back when 40 coming you know when I 60 think, come into the house i think mm. the other thing is is that the next I think the next 12 to 18 months is also a serious test of logistics skills. Oh, it's already like, like apart, I, yeah. I think, I think that you, you know, if you're, if you're a, if you have a shaky supply chain or you have um, not great um, forward looking skills, you're in trouble. I, I think as a retailer, you're in trouble. Yeah. You're in huge um, trouble. You know, like you, you, you know, if you use something simple like Christmas lights, right? Like this Christmas, you, you, if you were in stores December 1st through the 5th, maybe you had a variety of like Christmas lights you could choose from yeah. by about the 8th or 9th. The only thing you could buy was reindeer, small reindeer, big reindeer. That was it, right? Mm -hmm. Because nothing else made it through the containers. That was all right. And so you kind of go, okay, wait. So if I play this forward, come April when all the <laughs> containers have been unloaded, there's going to be a lot of Christmas lights. There's probably not going to be any patio furniture yet. So if you don't have the breadth or you haven't kind of looked ahead to buy the things you need, you're mm -hmm. also really jammed. Like, what are you going to do, right? Like, and it's not, 
like the pandemic was the opposite, right? Which is like, I had a lot of stuff and I had to be creative about how I packaged it so I could sell it off. Now, like if you don't have anything, you don't have anything. Mm -hmm. Like there is nothing to be creative about. Like you just don't, like an empty right. shelf is the worst, right? Like at least with excess inventory, you can do something with it. Mm -hmm. But um, empty well, shelves just means you, you can't you're sell air, business, man. right? You like can't you, sell air. No, you're, you're done, right? So mm -hmm. I right. worry that in the next 18 months, that's what you see is you see retailers that um, a little bit of bad luck, a little bit of bad planning, you know, one untime, a timely run. And all of a sudden they've got a, I mean, look at, look at how many places just from just lack of manpower went, listen, we, we can't stay open. We've got to yeah. close our doors. Reduce right? their hours as well. So, yeah. 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 So, so I worry about that in the, for retail in the next, you know, little bit is, is uh, that could sink a lot of people. That could be the last straw really. Yeah. I think for a lot of them, yeah. I think it's gonna be interesting too. I think right now, large retailers are really not fun to deal with in that there's been price increases uh -huh. every like i don't care pick a freaking commodity uh -huh. and when you're going in and trying to stay afloat um because freight's gone through the roof raw materials gone through the roof uh -huh. and you get all this bullshit pushback uh -huh. and this asinine no price increase this and what a crock of shit yeah <laughs> no you, you're like, absolutely you know right what? Yeah. you know what i like i know for sure like for me i got my list i i know i know who's i know who's in in, in you know in my naughty books mm -hmm. you know the ones who didn't help out when when we were looking for the help and yeah. who are going to require mm -hmm. a lot of us when the time comes mm -hmm. right and it's not a fun game I know Phil yeah. always goes because I go on these rants, but like that one just absolutely pisses no, me off. I, I, right I, now. Um, just drives me crazy. No, but I, I actually, I understand that one, right? Like it's, uh, boy, it's going to be, yeah. it's going to be fun. So I don't know. What are you thinking, Hayden? Like, yeah, we're, it, we're I don't think people. Pretty soon. That... You may as well introduce slide. yourself. It's, it's so yeah. people know who's on the show mm. with Phil and Ken because we basically just started talking to you. So, go, Peyton, please introduce yourself. Let us know who you are. <laughs> no worries. So, my name's Hayden Thompson, and I'm the host of the Pack Heavy podcast, which is very, very similar to this podcast. Actually, we uh, we share a lot in common. Um, we share so, a lot of guests, including each other. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. And yeah, so I had you back on in. Uh, it's almost twelve months ago. It was in February last year. You were episode oh, wow, really? thirteen. I had to go back and have a look. Yeah, it was. Wow. And so, yeah, just recorded episode 60 today, which was great. And I've been releasing an episode a week, just like you guys. That's pretty cool. Um, awesome. Yeah, but my full-time role is um, I work in business development at um, Food Pack, which is a packaging company in Vancouver. And we primarily sell to um, food-based businesses and help them package up their goods. And yeah, just speaking about logistics, like I don't think people understand the impact that the cost of logistics has had on business. Like a great example is pre-COVID, we were booking a sea can or a shipping container for, you know, anywhere from call it three to six grand. Right. And now you could book a sea can for 27 to $30,000. Right. Like same camp, same place, same, same destination. Can. Exactly. Nothing's if, changed. Nothing's changed. If you're lucky to get one. Yeah. If and you can find one. If you can find one. So not only the cost is increased, but then the lead times have just shot through the roof as well. Yeah. And, and right now, because of the floods in BC, there's not only a backlog of, you know, um, freighters out in the bay waiting to unload here, and the same is true down in Seattle and, and LA as well. A yeah. lot of, yeah. But then once it actually arrives here at port, there aren't enough trucks. And obviously with yeah. a lot of train lines um, being taken out with the floods through the Rockies, there isn't a logistical um, component to actually transport the go. So we've got stock that's been sitting, you know, at the and so hold, they call it since uh, prior to Christmas that we just can't even access. So we've just got stock sitting here that we can't even get into our warehouse and we can't get into our, our client's hands. So yeah, I mean, it is a challenge and um, you know, there are ways around it. Like you can always fly in small quantities ahead of ocean freight. And obviously there's a cost associated with that because it's not cheap. Well, to we fly did stock. that with you on, yeah, on the project yeah, we had. Exactly. With you. Exactly. But I mean, yeah, just to circle back to the cost of freight, I think that, um, you know, businesses to maintain and keep their doors open have obviously got to increase their prices and pass it along. And yeah, if these retailers aren't accepting price increases, it does make it really difficult because everybody's margins are already so thin, you know? Well, I, I just don't think they understand the game. And then, I, I, you know, and it's, and it's funny because I truly do like Save on Foods and I like Daryl Jones and I like that whole crew. But I'm really pissed at these commercials that come on and, you know, BC's had a tough time and, you know, we're here for you, the people, and we're making sure that we maintain those low prices. I'm thinking, 
yeah, be, you're, you're screwing all the people that are trying to supply the people who've been yeah. suffered by these things. You know, mm -hmm. no, we're not going to, we're all going to stop sooner or later. We're going to stop selling to people because if you can't make any money, like, what are you doing this for? I mean, this, this you know, we got families too. Yeah. Like, everybody behind that's got things going yeah. on in their worlds too. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And they seem to have lost sight of this. And I don't, I don't even think consumers are that. I think people get it. Mm -hmm. We've talked enough about it. There's a, it's ugly out there in a lot of ways, right? Yeah. I was reading some interesting articles, like the cost of a shipping container, obviously, was the reality of the price pre-COVID where it was where it should have been at, or was it completely underpriced, or are we overpriced now, and where's it all going to wash out, or you know? It can't that, stay where it that's is. That's the interesting it, thing. It yeah, can't. I know. Yeah, it can't. supply and demand. So wait, but, what, yeah. what's it at now? Yeah, like I said, anywhere from you know twenty seven to thirty thousand dollars. Yeah, Asia is expensive. Yeah, Europe there's a shortage of containers yeah. over there. Europe isn't yeah. as bad, but a can from Italy, a forty foot can, could still run you between, let's say, sixteen and twenty thousand US. Mm. Right? It depends. You, you know, it, it's it's any given Sunday as well, right? It's mm -hmm. again, there's the so, consistency. Is so how do you build into that? I don't but know. It, but it it's a it's a funny. I guess the flip side of that, right? Because uh, Kenny knows this about me, is I, I follow kind of all the tiny home movements and things like that. Oh yeah, yeah. Shipping containers has been a thing here, right? Like, I guess it's is it really expensive to send them back, right? Because like they're super cheap to buy. Like you could you could buy a container here. <laughs> for, they're harder to find now too. Even that's yeah, changed. like it's it's gone up a little, up. but it, yeah. it was like four or five grand. Uh, right. I think they're kind of run around the 10, 11 mark, but they, you seem to be able to get containers here. So mm. they're not going back clearly. That's the right? issue. Like, they're not going back. Yeah, right, exactly. Right. And I think there are some stories out there and you know what, I probably don't have as deep a level of an, of an understanding nor, nor is to comment on this, but I, I mm. did hear somewhere along the lines or I read it that they're sending back um, a huge volume of empty containers uh, back just so they can fill them back up yeah, again. Just so, so you can yeah. fill them. Yeah. 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 Well, anyway, it's not my, area, not, too, right? not my area of expertise. Not nor ours, ours either. <laughs> All it does, though, it does impact yeah. Yeah, how sure. it does. And I yeah. think it's going to be one of those things. It's push, you know, I think we're, it's funny. I think, Phil, this is where, uh, where Phil and I have had some discussions on different things, too, is I think this is where a lot of the local aspect might come back into play. So yeah. you know what? When I'm going to you, Hayden, saying, listen, I need bags for the next run of tea. Yeah. You know what? You know what, but I don't know if I really care if I pay 25 cents more bag. Can I do it local? Can I get it in Canada? Can yeah. I get it where I don't have to worry about bringing shit from overseas? Yeah. These like, uh, this extortion. Yeah, it is. But then you dig even further down their supply chain and the raw materials of plastic that extruders get yeah. to produce the plastic materials to, you know, print on and convert the bags. The, the raw materials are all coming from Asia as well. Mm -hmm. So no matter what, somewhere in the supply chain, it's um it's definitely not all localized you know no i i, I get it i think yeah. i'm wondering I, so look, look just for a second because i'm yeah. on this topic yeah so like is are there any for you in the packaging world can yeah. you source anything that is more localized is there let's say the plastic yeah. let's say virgin plastic yeah. is coming from asia yeah, yeah. Uh, let's say recycled package plastic is coming from multitude of places. like are there ways for you to source more shit here like forgetting plastic yeah if we tried to go into more compostable or um a more recyclable post yeah. uh like is there a play yeah well anything? the interesting thing about recyclability and compostability when it comes to packaging is the end of life systems that are available for us all to utilize mm -hmm. So, you know, you can have a compostable bag, like a flexible package. Uh, sorry, let's start with recyclables. So you can have here in BC, and I can only really speak to BC because it does differ from province to mm -hmm. province. But in BC, you can put a number seven recyclable logo on a flexible package, which is sort of like a catch-all for um, any flexible bag that's made up of uh, multiple laminated materials right okay. now you can take it to a store drop-off location like a london drugs for example right. or a recycle bc depot but it's not curbside recyclable so you can't put it in your curbside um otherwise and when it ends up getting taken to the murph or where they end up collecting it and sorting it out it'll just get thrown into the regular waste stream but what they do and they're really transparent on the recycle bc website is when you do take it to the proper location they'll collect it and they'll shred it and palletize it and then turn it into engineered fuel so that's the end of life system that's in place for recyclable okay. but it's not actually an infrastructure where they're you know um, delaminating collecting you know doing all of those things to turn them into park benches and so on like that infrastructure is not here yet and no. when that occurs and where the funding comes from like 
I, there's no real clear path through it. And in fact, I've actually got an expert coming on over the next couple of weeks onto the podcast to talk about it. So I'll be really be able to dig into that with them. So that's recyclable. Um, but when it comes to compostable, yeah, there's absolutely compostable structures available, readily available actually, but they're not necessarily always suited to specific products that you're packaging up. So they're really good for like dry goods, like coffee or, you mm-hmm. know, nuts and mixed nuts and stuff like that. Um, because as soon as you add an element of moisture, it, it somewhat starts the composting process. Right. Um, but yeah, then it's the end of life system. That's a reality here as well. So if you've got something that's certified industrial or even backyard compostable, if it's industrially um, compostable and certified industrial, there's actually nowhere to put it here. So you can't put it in your um, green compost bin at home for the municipality to take away. They, they're not accepting them. And the reason for that from, from what I understand and what's sort of being told out there and, and from what I can understand from the literature on all of the websites mm-hmm. is that the infrastructure to actually put it into an industrially compostable place um, isn't they're not accepting them and the reason from what i understand is that it's really hard to tell what a compostable pouch is compar- compared to a uh, conventional pouch because there's not a, a generic or a, not a uh, recognized um, symbol or logo across the board that will allow it into the system so they don't want to potentially um you know uh contaminate their compost heap right right right. so yeah that's that's the issue at the moment and then when it comes to backyard composting yeah you can absolutely put a a certified backyard compostable bag in your backyard compost but how long it actually takes to compost is a is a different story and how many coffee bags you're actually going to put in your home compost before it becomes i guess this is what i'm trying to figure out so like so i mean how does how do how do we do how do we do anything that that's i know how do we how do we do the right thing how do we be green like Dude, how, how do I do? I can't. If I can't, I, if I buy it, you tell me it's compostable, yep. and the city won't take it, yeah, because there doesn't have a number or something. You know, you put yep. a fucking number on it. It's Make really interesting. The number, I don't I care know. what the number is. Just tell yeah. us where to put this stuff so yeah. that we can help. Yeah, and you know, the frustrating thing is, is like you would be blown away by the amount of inbound calls that we get at Food Pack for people, like whether businesses or consumers, people wanting to try and do the right thing and and make good to purchasing decisions for their business, you know, and represent a sustainable solution. And we're always very transparent with like, yeah, we can provide you with this structure, but the reality is, is there's nowhere to put it. And then when hmm. people cost it out, you know, there's a 20 to 30% increase in cost because it is a compostable structure and there are high MOQs because they're hard to come by as well. Like yeah. the manufacturers are like, well, you got to meet a minimum to actually get something into your hands. So yeah, I mean, there are barriers still out there, but it is a solution that is available. But until the end of life system and infrastructure is in place, I think it's really unfortunate that that's what we're looking at. Yeah. It's a little, um, like it, it colors all of the recycling stuff, right? Because yeah. you, you start to think, you know, like, you know, cause the fallacy now, it feels like a fallacy, right? Is if you do the right thing and you, you follow the three R's, you, you know, reuse, recycle, reduce. Yeah. But if you just do the blue bin and the green bin thing, you're that's still not really we're not have you done it have you helped or not right as i i think that's where i'll look at so did i I do anything of value did i contribute or did i just make myself feel better Mm -hmm. and as soon as i start thinking about it it's not good but if i don't think about it i can smile i've 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 saved but 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 on the flip Mm -hmm. side right so the flip side of this is as well is like kenny you and i we've had conversations with brands that we've worked with where you say you know how do we be more environmentally friendly? So what we're right. looking at is, you know, if you use uh, if you use plastic, you know, is is there a different packaging that we can use? But we don't. I have never taken into consideration that even if I get them in from plastic into a cardboard, you know, container or paper compostable thing that there may or may not be a system for the product I've chosen. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, so, yeah. so it's, it's very, it's a very myopic view that mm-hmm. I, I'm, I, I'm putting it in something that's, that's going to be environmentally friendly if there was somewhere for this to go. Right. right yeah. Like, but I didn't know I've never was asked no that question. For it to go, because I just assumed again, yeah. if it says what it is, and I'm, I'm reading it and I'm doing my part. I'm thinking makes oh, my brain I've, hurt a little. I've done my no. part. Like, and then you find <laughs> yeah. out later, we do talk about it. We're thinking, yeah. well, I didn't really do much of anything. I mean, you tried. Yeah. 
A for effort, I guess. Yes. But yeah. And we're sort of wondering where the real change is going to come from. Is it yeah. going to be driven because retailers are going to demand that their vendors, um, you know, only put their product in certain structures so that materials are there to then warrant investing in the infrastructure? Like, we just don't know. So, yeah, I mean, come from the consumer side. It, you know that right? the drive does. Yeah, absolutely. Or but it um, has to be economical for me. So, hey, you need that's to come right. out to me and say, listen, yeah. You bought this bag before and it's a three. I don't care what the number is. Yeah. You really need to be in a, in a 27. But then I look, you say, okay, how do you get me into a 27? Then you'd walk me through the process and then yeah. it would come down the money. Yeah. Right. And most of us, if we're really wanting to do it, you know, I, I, I mean, Spence and I could cut margin if we had to, mm -hmm. if we, we could really do the right thing. If I yeah. could get compostable and you told me I could throw it in the thing, I might look and say, listen, you know, it's going to go from, a dollar to a dollar 30 you know what let's figure out how to make it work yeah 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 well there's not? a value proposition there you know but um you know until that end of life system's in place That's like some businesses happen. are still making a decision to make that purchase because there is value in getting ahead of the curve in getting their product into that pouch and with the knowledge and understanding that one day this is going to be here and then there are other companies that are like, well, you know what? We're not going to put the cart before the horse. We're going to wait until the infrastructure's there. And right. and um, so it's a really interesting case, you know, and um, it just everybody makes a decision though, for themselves. Right? Yeah. It takes yeah. one or two guys. Electric cars yeah. have been tried yeah. since the 60s. Yeah. This isn't new. Electric cars are not brand new. Yeah. I mean, the battery technology definitely had to get to where mm -hmm. it is now. That's yeah. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. But the technology, the concept is not new, but it really took someone like a Tesla. Mm -hmm. And probably a few others to push it, make it sexy. No, it took Elon Musk, not Tesla, right? Yeah, it like, took Musk, like, right? like, because Toyota's company. been doing Toyota's been doing oh. electric for a long time, right? But it wasn't sexy. It was very like, it was um, nerdy, really, right? Like, it yeah, didn't well, matter that Brad didn't Pitt was driving well, or right, whatever. whatever. It was nerdy, right? And then, on, and then, like and then. On. Yeah, and then Tesla, right? Like Which Elon Musk, all of a sudden turned it into this thing, right? For like sure. he was just like. If you want to be a rock star, you got to drive right. Tesla, luxury right? vehicle. And all of a sudden, it was like, oh my yeah. god! But now you look so, at it, and yeah. you know, by 2030, mm -hmm. most of the majors are not producing combustion engines anymore. Mm -hmm. Some yeah. will still continue, but for the most part, by 2035, 2040, yeah, you know, you're not going to hear anything. You're not going to hear any cars anymore. Yeah. yeah Didn't yeah. Ford just release an F-150, an electric version? They did, and it's yeah. selling like yeah. hotcakes. It's crazy. I it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Ford, they, the Mustangs uh, electric or has really? an electric option. Yeah. Um. I think I've heard Chevy was looking at the Corvette, hmm. which they could. I mean, they've got E1 cars, not, you know, mm -hmm. not F1 anymore. It's going to be E1. Yeah. That, uh, that you know, I mean, it's that it's there. But again, it's it just sort of takes that one or two. And you know, maybe the thing is like even for us, if it's compostable and even if it goes into the trash, the, the theory in my mind would be okay. It's still in a landfill with a ton of stuff that's not going to go anywhere. But at least this will be gone. Well, no, That's not necessarily. Oh, well, yeah. No, seriously? In? Yeah, no, on, because because landfills are made to encapsulate, right? So they will put it in the landfill oh, and then they cover it over to encapsulate it. So there's no oxygen and there's no anaerobic digestion to actually start the breaking down process. Well, you got dirt and bugs so, and worms? Come on. Not, not there. <laughs> it mummifies it. So it'll still be looking exactly the same in X amount of years. Well, that's great. But um, you know where I think the real change is going to happen is in bioplastics, like um, seaweed-based plastics. And yeah. um, mm. that seems to be where a lot of innovation is occurring well, right now. Corn's been around for a long time, right? The corn-based. Corn yeah, yeah, yeah. And... There are issues there as well. And I don't want to sort of like shine the light on a lot of negativity today. But yeah, I mean, GMO or non-GMO corn, like there's a lot of issues yeah. around that in in some people's eyes but yeah bioplastics and seaweed because seaweed's a renewable resource it grows really quickly it helps to sort of um sequester carbon from the atmosphere right. I mean, and bamboo, I guess does a lot of really good things too. bamboo mm -hmm. yeah but um yeah there's a lot of innovation mm -hmm. and um work being done in universities and and yeah. companies doing r d and um i think that that's where the real future lies and it sounds really exciting to me yeah wow yeah yeah that'll Crazy be good world packaging eh isn't it? It's, you know what, that's a, it's based. So I started prior to working at food pack. I was the food service sales manager at salt spring coffee. And I was laid off when mm. COVID hit, like our sales or my sales food service drew like dry, oh, dried up right. overnight, yeah, yeah. like <laughs> gone. So I was, yeah. I was laid off. I think it was initially the layoff period was six weeks and then it got, I got laid off for another six weeks. So then it was 12 and then it, it turned into five and a half months. Wow. <laughs> at wow. which points so I'm like, all right, I've got a role and I actually got let go from salt spring because they were moving and changing their business and the way that it was structured. 
And, um, and I started to look elsewhere and, and tried to figure out what my options were. And I found a role at Foodpack and I've never been happier in my career. It's been awesome because um, prior to Foodpack, I'd only ever been in the hospitality industry, really like managing cafes, being a barista, working for coffee roasters and, you know, really embedded and, you know, um, really had my heart and soul in the coffee industry, just pouring lattes and just loved it. And, um, and I've still got my finger on the pulse in the packaging industry. Like I'm selling packaging into the coffee world and, and that's mm. been awesome and keeping mm-hmm. relationships there and speaking the same language as them. And, but yeah, I mean, that was part of the motivation for starting the podcast as well, because getting to know a new industry is really challenging and getting out and speaking to clients about their businesses and what challenges and what their focuses are and so on was just awesome. And I thought, well, I'm having awesome conversations with these people and surely it's going to bring value to other people as well. So the idea of the podcast came up and, and here we are today. So I, yeah, I love it, it. it's been great. Yeah, awesome. yeah I love it. I, yeah. I listen to it all the time. And, and I Thank think, you. um, I think that the work that you're doing, because we like where, um, where it makes a ton of sense. So when, when Kenny said, Hey, we should, we should have Hayden on and, and I've talked to you before. Yeah. And then we were like, you know what? Like we have so many little brands. Yeah that are around that struggle with this precise thing, right? Like they, yeah, they you know, they, they make it and they realize like, I, I gotta put it, I gotta, I gotta put, I gotta it, put in it in something. Yeah. Where the What's hell do it, I yeah. put it in, right? Like, where do I go, right? Like yeah. the um, Sasha actually said that he went on Amazon and, mm-hmm. and, <laughs> and bought packaging for oh, yeah. this product, right? Cause he was like, yeah, I, I don't know where yeah, to that's... start, right? Like I, I gotta start Sasha, somewhere. Listen, so. Talk to phone Hayden. Yeah, Sorry. yeah actually that's a good one. Sasha's got Sasha to phone you. Yeah, that'd be great. Two, what did we have on last week? Two weeks? Two weeks ago. Uh, I think it was was nice it last? Kid, right? I, I have no idea actually. No, weeks ago. No, nice young man. Got a cool. Yeah. Got, got a cool snack. But dude, same he thing. has I mean, got well, the most delicious off, snack off Amazon. Like you can't yeah. buy shit like that. Well, I mean, yeah. it's not necessarily specialized and um, no. oriented specifically for the product that you're putting out there because no. every every product or every coffee, ah, uh, sorry, every food based product has a unique sort of Absolutely. requirement mm. around shelf life and barrier protection and yeah. so on. So you uh, will build a package moisture, around it. Moisture, oils, yeah. Yeah. whatever. There's a million different things with this stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so that's yeah. sort of what I've been focusing on now. But yeah, that is a, a whole world of its own. And we we're just talking about sort of the the small world that the CPG industry is and the packaging industry is the same. And I'm sure all industries are exactly the same. Like it's very, you know, everybody knows everybody, which is really cool. But yeah, on LinkedIn, I find it a, an amazing resource to get out there and, and learn who, who all of the names are that you need mm-hmm. to know and start conversations. Mm-hmm. And yeah, hey, thank you very much for the intro to uh, Richard from NSC as well. That was a great yeah. conversation. I learned a lot from Richard. He was, uh, he's a best. Richard's fun. Rich yeah, is, he Rich is. is fun. He's fun. Yeah, yeah he's a cool yeah. dude. He's he fun is. to talk to. Yeah. See, so, so that's a funny one. Mm-hmm. Right is is um, mm-hmm. NRC comes in sachets, right? So it yep. comes in those you know plastic sachets that you break yep. open. Yeah. And and so like if you move that to something that's environmentally friendly, mm-hmm. you may or may not be able to find something that as an like an end. You know what I mean? Like so the yeah. the brand itself could feel good because hey, we moved to I I don't know like I don't A know compostable about structure. Packaging. Yeah. yeah. So so yep. if you went to like the brown paper sachets that you put brown yeah. sugar in, right? Like, yeah. but it doesn't necessarily mean that when you drop it into your compost bin, well, one that 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 qualifies for every compost bin across North America or across yeah. Canada, even. Yeah. And then two is it it could just sit there, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. So I had a guy from a company called Nature Flex on the podcast because I wanted mm-hmm. to discuss with him sort of what the ins and outs of it were as well. Right. And yeah. so they sort of tend to use the language earth digestible. So say for example, so it's a, a plastic made from a wood-based fiber and it's actually like a cellophane, it's cellulose. So it's wood-based fiber. It's and, like trucks, okay. like same idea, the deck materials? The what, sorry? The deck materials, like your, your building materials, like tracks yeah. or... Uh... Oh, I don't know. I'm not I'm too sure. Though, say, say yeah. that. It sounds very similar. Yeah. So anyway, this is hundred percent compostable um, backyard yeah. compostable, but if it doesn't end up in the landfill and say, for example, because the issue with like a, a small wrapper, like you think of like a Snickers wrapper or something like that, yeah. as soon as you rip it, you've got two pieces, you know? So to get yeah. those two pieces in the same place, you know, it's very, very difficult. So they're the sort of the language that they use is that their products are earth digestible. So say if it doesn't end up in the trash or if it doesn't end up going into a composting facility and it ends up on the side of a road or in a stream or in the ocean it's going to digest or be digested by the earth so it is a good solution in that case you know it's not just going to no, sit there for a thousand years that's actually yeah kind of interesting I hope yeah it to promote litter yeah well exactly but you know the reality <laughs> is is that some of it's going to escape <laughs> yeah. yeah 
Yeah, it's not. You got to go to the lowest common denominator of man, right? I mean, well, yeah. obviously, we can throw it all away. You know, the oceans will be filled with all this earth digestible stuff. It just takes the earth a little while to digest. It. Yeah. <laughs> well, because that's everything too, right? You, you know, you can't you can't have stuff just sitting around. Yeah. Waiting. We got to do something with all this. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So right. you're both you're both consultants. So you're obviously having conversations with businesses as well, whether it's about packaging or you name yeah, it. All of it. Yeah. So I mean, was that the motivation behind starting the podcast as well? In that you guys were having conversations that you thought you'd bring to the world, or how did you guys get started? I actually love the fact that he's on our show and interviews. Asking us. the questions. You're welcome. Like, I, I, love I, I, love I love it. I love it. I love it. He's such a good interviewer. <laughs> Can't help myself. Like he's gonna make our podcast his podcast. We're gonna get we're gonna get gobbled up. <laughs> yeah, um, it's it's funny actually because we we didn't really the only motivation uh, on the opening of the podcast was that we liked talking to each other, yeah. Yeah. and we wanted to talk to each other. So, um, so literally that's what it was, right? And and so we started that, and, and I said to Kenny, I know how we're going to do this, right? And he was like, I don't know, and I go. Just, I got this right. Like I'll, I'll go set this up. I'll, I, I, you know, so I disappeared for a month, got everything, you know, kind of plugged in, and then you know, just call me, like Zoom, let's Zoom, and then let's just, and I think we did one dry run maybe, and we might have actually put that out too, and then and then we, we went everything. And I don't that, think we had anything it. in the in the camera. Um, and then, but it's evolved a lot. Like so, when we first started, it was very, um, like CPG industry news. Mm -hmm. You know, so we, we zeroed in on retailers, what retailers were doing different. And then we realized that there were all these, like, you know, both of us really love, um, you know, brands that are growing, brands that have figured out how to do things differently. Um, and so, you know, like it's evolved, right? Like, like right, right off the get go, we realized, eh, you know, like the industry stuff is, it's sort of interesting, right? Like they're, you know, we're all kind of like trying to keep our ear to ground, figure it out. But there's like this whole other world of like things that we have answers for that people may not have answers for, right? Yeah. And and that's kind of where it went, right? Yeah. Kenny, is I, that kind of- I think what it was, hey, very yeah. similar to you, I think that the thing is that what we found is that like, if you go to the food execs, that's a room with a lot of people who know a lot of interesting things. Mm -hmm. People have been around, uh, a lot of nuances of retail, food service side, um, traditional like retail, like just a lot mm -hmm. of cool things, right? But yeah. when you, if you're out there as an entrepreneur and trying to find a guy can, who can do packaging, the guy who can do printing, the guy who can do displays, a guy who can show you how to cost, the guy who can, like they're out there, but if you're not in the game, yeah. where the hell are mm -hmm. you looking? Yeah, and yeah. if you go online, what are you going to type? Mm -hmm. Consultant? Yeah. <laughs> like we're like, where do you find people like us that are more than happy to just shoot the shit? Yeah. What information we don't, you know, there's no nothing attached to it. You get free information, you take it and run. If you do well, God bless you. I hope I crush it. Mm. Right. But, and, you know what I mean? Mm. Like it's, it was hard to find anything. So I think as Phil and I kept going, we thought, you know, we can actually help a lot of people. Like if someone would listen to a few episodes, you know, take out our parts if they don't want, it, but listen to the guests, listen mm. to the trials and tribulations. Yeah. You actually might learn something. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, right now, Asasha, if he's listening, he's got a packaging guy. Now he's got yeah. a guy. He yeah. now knows a guy. Yeah, yeah. it's true. Right. It's That's true. what it takes mm -hmm. because yeah. then the phone call to you is, Hey, how can you help me do this? And then he'll ask, Hey, I need a pre-pack guy. And you'll say, okay, listen, I know a guy, a little boxer, whatever listen, it is. Yeah. It listen, Hayden, through. The, the thing about Sasha is, the product he has massively it's, addictive it's fucking delicious what is, is it is, I, did, I so, didn't listen to this episode yeah, yeah. so so it's called addictive. poco and it's like this uh rice and chickpea based um chip like a I guess, frito lay sort of it, it looks so so my kid, like a puff it's puffed no, like a puff it's, no, no? It's, a flat. no it's 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 flat and curly yeah. have you ever had corn um, chips like frito lay corn chips yeah yeah, 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 like, like a, a so it looks like yeah. a corn chip, literally. Yeah. Not, not like yeah. a more like, um, the corn, like an old school so, corn chip. So my yeah. youngest, who's yeah. fourteen, doesn't listen to the podcast or anything. She ate this and she was like, "This is like a healthy Doritos," is what she said to me. And the the two bags, it, so he he was very kind. He was like, "Oh, we're gonna drop off samples," and and both you know Kenny and I are weird about getting free stuff, right? So so we're like, "No, nah, you know, we'll buy some stuff." And yeah, whatever. he was I'm like, yeah, yeah. "No, no, I insist. I'll drop." You know, all right, you know, you know. So drop us some bags. I think we blew through our bags in 
I I want to say hours, not days. Yeah, because it They're was so delicious. Good. Like that, like the kids just like they loved eating them, right? Like I'm I'm gonna buy more, right? Because it's just um, if these were in a so, bar. So with beer, the, the oh. end result is <laughs> yeah. is. If you talk to him and he offers you samples, you Bacon. say yes. Don't say no. Yeah. Bacon. Yeah. You say yes. How big are the Bacon. bags? You know, like you should yeah. give me a bunch of different size bags so I can help you source different size bags. Man, he it's needs incredible. Help. Yeah. He needs yeah. help. I'll yeah, have a yeah, chat yeah, with him. Yeah, yeah. Introduce me. Yeah. It's yeah. incredible how generous people are, though. Like, uh, just to. Um, just to bring up Richard from NSE again as yeah. well. Like he was really generous, sent a case of product to us as well. Awesome. I was blown away by the like the NSC product itself. Outstanding. Yeah, and the sugar free, product. the sugar free product alone. I was a and they're good. Yeah. They're really good. They're yeah. super yeah. good, they're man. Really like good. they're tasty. Yeah. Like yeah. they're not crap. They're good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I really like yeah. the sugar free more even than the other ones. Yeah. Yeah. I love them. He won yeah. me over. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Wow. No, it was. So yeah, no, look, I get a lot of value out of these conversations as well. And I think that, you know, you're only as strong as the network of people around you as well. And Agreed. networking for some people can be really difficult because they are so focused on their business and they're working in their business rather than on their business. But they don't see it. They don't see it. Yeah. So just, you know, even a, a 35, 45 to an hour conversation where they can have it on in the background and they may be able to learn something that, you know, mm -hmm. just a small little right. insight that can give them some encouragement or, you know, help them yeah. sort of move in a direction that's beneficial for their right. business is always yeah. awesome but then yeah one thing that i always ask my guests as well is like who do you lean on like who do you ask questions and who do you bounce ideas off and the most successful entrepreneurs that i've spoken to all have a really good core of people around yeah, them you need a network you, you need, yeah, you, need network. you need go to people you need people yeah. that you can you call. gotta know a guy yeah yeah you know the old expression i know yeah. a guy you yeah. have to know a guy yeah yeah or a gal or whatever yeah. you want to call it in today's world i don't care yeah. but you gotta know you gotta know a guy yeah. Right. That's how this world runs. And you really got to get down to that. Yeah. And I think that's sort of the trick. Yeah. Let me ask so, something so, for you. Oh, sorry. Go for that. Go, yeah. Go. No, I, I, I'm curious. So I, I'm curious where you go. That's what I was going like, to ask. Like, you. so, yeah, because, because I think, mm. so, so Kenny and I, um, it is what it is, right? Like we, we, we live in a tried and true world, you know, yeah. retail is, you know, retail is old as retail is. Retail right? is retail. Yeah. You, yeah. you live in a world that, is evolving so quickly, right? From standard packaging to oh, yeah. all this environmental stuff. Where yeah. do you, like, where do you go to tap into this stuff? Um, yeah. And then who do you, who do you talk to in this? Yeah, it's really interesting. Yeah. So, I mean, like, obviously there's so much information out on the web, but not all of it's always relatively um, up to date or, or, or even, um, or even true and accurate. Like there's accurate, a lot of crap yeah. out there. Yeah. yeah there's a lot say. of, there's yeah. a lot of bull crap out there. So I, I always follow my nose on LinkedIn to start with, try and find okay. out who the people are that are actually having the conversations and where the most relevant information is coming from. Uh -huh. And then I'll just reach out directly and just ask if they want to have a conversation. You know, I'm not afraid to ask for, you know, a couple of minutes of their time. I think uh -huh. that there's nothing wrong. The, the worst thing they can do is say no. Yeah. And it's amazing how willing people are to talk. Uh, 90% you know? love yeah. to talk. And you know yeah. what? Why yeah. not? Right. Yeah, exactly. So that's where I try and like, um, get a lot of my information from but then i think it's never been a better time to actually um get out there and and like even people like andrea gray grant from good to grow like i refer people to her quite frequently like she's a consultant out there in the cpg world mm -hmm. um food based primarily and she's doing amazing things here and she's got short courses that can be leveraged online or you know for the longest time she had like actual like in-person classes but they got put on hold because of covid yeah, but yeah yeah there are so many people out there that you know i've got these short courses on and there are books and you know there are just so many resources podcasts like you guys it's it's amazing but yeah i always start with linkedin just see where the conversation's at. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So in terms yeah, of your podcast, Caden, when you're yeah. when you're from where you started yeah. to where you are today. Yeah. How much of it, how much of it, what's what are the changes that you've made and are, are have seen? And where are you mm. gonna go with it? Like yeah. like we've changed a lot. We've told yeah. you we started different. What yeah, how yeah. did you like where what where's you where are you going? Yeah, you know, primarily the the actual like foundation of it hasn't shifted much. Like as a as a conversational style of episode. Um, the style of questions that I ask has shifted and it's just natural that you get better at the craft of interviewing people as well. So, I mean, I think that a lot has evolved there. Um, you know, oh, 
started to um, bring in some advertising revenue. So I've got a, a few sponsors for the show as well. So that's been oh, that's really awesome. cool. So I, I do a shout out to some sponsors at the front and at the back mm -hmm. end as well. Um, I'm about to start getting video up and running. So, I mean, I've been recording all of my episodes over Zoom, just like you guys as yeah. well, but I haven't been leveraging video. And I think that that's a medium that is totally yeah. underutilized by me and, and I can do more with it. So that's something that I'm going to have a play with over the next couple of months. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just something that I refine over time because I don't want it to sound like an excuse, but I mean, it's busy being a dad and it's busy having a full-time job and trying to, you know, maintain a career and all of that kind of stuff. And to do a podcast on the side and, and put as much time and effort and energy into it that I want to, the reality is, is that I can't. So I have to be really strict with my time. So the time that I do work on the podcast is... You know, once the kids are asleep, the lunch has been made, the kitchen's been tidy up, you've done a, a run around the house to clean it up. And then it's 8.30 at night, you open up the laptop and you try and put in a couple of hours before you go to bed. And that's my reality. Mm. So they're not my best hours that I'm putting into the into right. the podcast either, but that's just what I've got to work with at the moment too. So I think that over time, uh, I'll have a little bit more time that frees up. Um, and the good thing as well is that, you know, Food Pack have been really supportive of the podcast as well. And, and I uh, record my episodes during business hours too, which is- well, it's not hurting them either. We are talking no. about them as yeah, well. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, I mean, that, it, win, it goes win, hand right? in hand. It oh, goes 100%. hand in hand. Yeah, 100%. for sure. Yeah. How, um, how old are your kids? Yeah. So I've got a, um, a two-year-old and a four-year-old. Um, yeah. My little boy is four and yeah. he's just a whirlwind of energy, mate. And we just cannot drain his battery enough. And then uh, my little daughter, Hazel, is just a sweet little thing. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. They're so young. Still. Yeah, wow. I know. Actually, on the weekend, it was a funny story. Um, so I can't remember if it was Saturday or Sunday. It doesn't matter. But uh, we had breakfast as a family, cooked pancakes. We set them up with their coloring pencils and textures and stuff like that at the kitchen table. And then Ash, my wife, and I started to get the dishes done. And we turn around and they're both drawn all over their faces. So they had like ink all over their faces. That's and that amazing. was hilarious. Yes, yeah, so that, that was the morning. That was the morning. Then we got about our day and we couldn't get all the marker off their faces. So yeah. we had two kids through the day, like all around town with marker all over their faces. And it looked like my boy, like had a little unibrow, right? It was funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's we get cute. to We get to Canadian Tire. And uh, do a little bit of shopping there. And then my wife, Ash, gives Hazel, my daughter, the keys to the car to keep her hands busy while she's putting her in the car seat. And Ash closed the door and realized that Ash, uh, that Hazel still had the keys and she locked herself in the car. <laughs> and we oh couldn't get in. And then, like, Hazel just wouldn't hit the right button. We're like, come right, on, right, hit right. the bottom button. <laughs> got roadside assistance. So BCAA came out pretty quick and unlocked the car. But there was a couple of minutes of panic in a bit oh, of yeah, for sure. We've, we've for all sure. done just that. We've all done of, it. Just, just so you know, we've kids. all done that. We've all done it. <laughs> I did that. I did it yeah. at 7 Eleven. I locked her in the car and she was, a, I don't know, like 16 months. Yeah. 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 So, you know, and then panic, just yeah. absolute sheer panic. Yeah. Yeah. I but think they had the joys of being a parent. Yeah. 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 I think, I think in my neighborhood, I'm known for like, I, you know, the, the morning rushes to get them to school and stuff like yeah. that. I think my neighbors would tell you that I'm the guy that leaves the door open on the car. Like, yeah. While you're driving off. <laughs> uh, no, no. Well, yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah. But, but, uh, <laughs> there are moments like that as well. Yeah. There are moments you're like, mm, you know, if I just one little nudge and then, you know, yeah. it'll be quiet for a long time. Cause it'll just, you know, but, um, that's not the one I want to tell you, but, yeah. <laughs> but, it, um, like you're, you're dashing them to school and yeah. then I'll come back and all the car doors are like wide open. Everything's just wide open. The keys are still in the ignition. I'm like, Oh my God, I'm, I don't, I wonder what I look like with all the other parents, right? I must look like this crazy tornado man. Oh, like, when you just... come back to the car from dropping yeah, in the class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and yeah, it's, yeah. it's like the party's still going <laughs> and we just left it there, right? Like, yeah. God, yeah. so. I know. That's the yeah. fun of games, right? Parenting is awesome. It's uh, it's absolutely changed my life. And yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, you know, it makes you think about things that, you know, I never used to really think about the future that much, but I, I think about the future a lot, you know, the kind of life that I'm trying to etch out for yeah. for our kids and what's important in life is sort of more of a focus now than it's ever been. Yeah. 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 Um, that's cool. You're you're dialed into this. So I I um I want to ask you one last question. Cause something yeah. that Kenny sure. and I are starting to really dial in on, right? Like so so the conversation earlier about thinking through the entire compostable thing I, yeah. I think is um it's a it's a kick in the seat in the pants right because you just yeah. like you you think you're doing great and i i think i think i it to me i mm -hmm. feel like all of this is a kick in the pants right so the story i've told a couple of times now is i 
have started to try and figure out how to be more sustainable in all the things I do, right? So yeah. everything. So it's been difficult buying, you know, I, I don't really need new clothes or anything like that, but, um, and I'm not ashamed to admit, like I'm, I'm pushing 50 and, and I like buying co clothes from Costco, for example, right? Yeah. But I don't do that now because I realize these are not really sustainable do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I, I'm going to buy Absolutely. stuff that's yeah. going to wind up in a landfill and will yeah. probably never break yeah. down ever, right? Yeah. Um, and so I've started trying to figure this out, but it every time I think I learn something, it yeah. gets more complex because I don't understand, you know, like the claim of like, well, this is sustainable and we did this properly. And you kind of go, yeah, but you're still going to mail it to me. So... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like yeah, yeah. the carbon footprint, like, you know, there's just like, they're, um, there are all these things, right? So I don't know, I guess I get, this might be wind up being a recurring question and, and listeners might hate it. Do you have any like tips on where we start with this crazy stuff? Like, um, when it comes to packaging itself. Yeah. Like, yeah, like no. even like, let's say I'm a consumer. Well, I am a yep. consumer. So if I yep. go in a store, yep. like, so Costco the joy has gone out of Costco for me a little bit because when I look around, all I see is really terrible packaging, right? Yeah, like everything from uh, like the, a bag the inside a bag, shells, inside a bag. The, yeah. the shrink wrap, or the wrap, big huge the, sheets of paper you know, with a little like, oil volet attached. Like you know, what yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. All like, the wow. things that you do for theft and merchandising, and then yeah. but now I'm going, oh my god, we're going to hell, right? Literally, <laughs> we're going to hell because we're encouraging them to like just basically use all of our resources in the world. But are there any like things that I can look at to kind of go like from a packaging packaging perspective that I can yep. go, okay, you know what? I could, I could get behind this. Do you know? Yeah. It's really interesting. I mean, like there are so many benefits to flexible packaging in itself, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so the actual, the, the material, like the raw materials, the volume of material needed to package up a product. If you're putting in a flexible packaging is a lot less than if you were using like, um, you know, uh, a plastic, you know, a plastic jar or a glass jar or a container mm -hmm. or something like that, like the weight in itself and the, the volume that you'd have to ship like a thousand jars versus a thousand flexible bags is very, very different. Right. Okay. So, I mean, there are benefits in that respect, but if you're talking yeah. about like the plastic material, we always come back to like, what's the reality of the end of life system that's currently in place and what direction is it heading in? And like, who's going to support recyclability? Who's going to support the compostable, um, you know, avenue that it is all going to go down. And we're not too sure on like what the future looks like. So that's why I'm really excited to have this conversation in a couple of weeks mm -hmm. with this guy, because I think that I'm going to learn a lot from the conversation as well. So, I mean, even though like yeah. packaging is something that we absolutely focus on at food pack and we do very, very well, there's, yeah. even though we are deeply embedded in the industry, there's still a lot that we don't even know about it mm -hmm. because, you know, we can look at other websites and like I said, there's a lot of crap out there. That's not necessarily true, but the, the reality is also that it is so hinged on the municipality that you live in and the municipalities that you sell in, because you look down in the States and there are some, you know, States down there where they do have the infrastructure to support recyclability of like flexible packages. Mm -hmm. But if you're selling, you know, us wide, or if you're selling Canada wide, like it's just going to be totally hinged on where you're selling the product and what their reality is at right. a local level. So yeah, I don't know, mm -hmm. mate, like, okay. It, it is really interesting yeah. to know what the future holds and what kind of time frame that we're looking at. Like, I think that's the million dollar question is all of this, like five, 10, 15 years away. Like, I don't know. And I don't know where the money's coming from. So that'll be something and some questions that I'll, um, I'll be looking to ask as well. So, yeah. Oh, I'm looking forward to this. I'm one. looking forward yeah. to this one too. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I mean, we've both been on this yeah. Yeah. a lot lately. Yeah. Yeah. But right. I mean, you, you just mentioned like electric vehicles before and, you know, like it sounds like a really great choice and it, and it, it is in so many ways, Right. but you know, even like the batteries, where, like, the batteries where are those though? minerals, yeah, you know, yeah, they're yeah. being mined yeah. out of, you know, yeah. and <laughs> you how know, long, that's you know, been taken forever, out of the ground. Right? No, they're not. not well, um, seven years, right? Really? Yeah. Like they, they yeah. last seven years that you even do, start but thinking how, about replacing them. Right. Yeah. But, that, but, but nobody knows what you do with like leaf. Nissan leafs have been around a long time. Right. But, you know, like it costs $7,000 to replace a battery. And then what do mm -hmm. they do with the other battery? Right. And it, nobody can tell yeah. you that. Right. Like, and the stuff yeah. they're putting in so, the battery fill isn't, isn't sustainable. No, yeah. no, no. Once you pull but it out of the earth, like, it's gone. Right. Gosh, it's, we're going to hell in a handbag. I know. And then, you know, but it's the, still I, better. It's still better. So you, you yeah. got to take, you got to take the, the, the little wins. Right. 
people in australia people in australia make me laugh though because like in australia they still burn coal for energy right like over here Mm. we're kind of lucky in that we're it's hydro Mm -hmm. right it's electricity from the the water we have water though yeah we do Mm. here but back in australia we don't so uh unless it is solar power that is charging up your tesla it's being charged from burning coal oh no (laughs) because i mean that's you know what i mean so it's like okay but I guess oh, yeah. so you know what you were you were burning the coal anyway, and you were burning fuel. Yeah. Now you're only burning burning coal. one. Yeah. So I mean, again, you got to It's it's sad, but you got to take small wins. I know. I yeah. just think what we're all to the point is probably because you, it's the older you get, is like you do you start thinking, you know, shit, what are we leaving to the to the kids and the kids' kids? Yeah. Like what's going to be left to this thing? That's what I think about a lot, and that's what I meant before. Like I now that I'm a what, dad, I think about I the future, it. and I think about all of this yeah, stuff, and I'm sure it. you guys too. But yeah. Yeah. I don't know, mate. I am concerned about the future, but then I know that we'll find a way through it as well. Well, we, see, we seem to be a, a pretty resilient species. Mm-hmm. And in theory, we're relatively intelligent. So in you, theory. Think, <laughs> you think there's got to be no, some I, way. I, I think the, I, the last two years, the book is out uh, on that one. There, there's yeah. no theory on this. So we aren't. We're really not that we're, bright, bright a species. Uh, I think we're not any more enlightened in the last hundred years than we were than the prior hundred. I, yeah. I think it's all a, an illusion. But if anything, I think in the last two um, years we re- regressed even more. Yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, we'll see. Um, we'll see. Hayden, we we love yeah. having you on. You're, we are, you're uh, fun, man. I love you, I love talking uh, to you. Your your knowledge gave us a, a kind of a kick kick in the seat of our pants but oh, um it's but, okay but, no, it's but we love good. no really no, like I, I think this has been a, a phenomenal episode so. yeah well thank you very much for your yeah. time and for the opportunity to come onto the oh show God, and for yeah. your support thank it you was so really much. nice to have a chat with you both thank yeah, you it's yeah. awesome yeah yeah thanks all right thanks, take buddy. care guys bye take care okay we'll the kids. Bye, Hayden. Ciao. Ciao, buddy. okay phil that was good thank you that was good yeah oh my god yeah i enjoyed that that was good yeah yeah, yeah. I'm no, glad you, we're great. Yeah, glad you that yeah. was great. That was really great. No worries. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it is hard. It is, you know, we have these conversations at work all the time. Like, what the fuck is the future hold for us? Like, you know, we really want to provide people with the right solution. And like I said, we've got it. Like, mm-hmm. we can provide recyclable or compostable options, but like, where's it going to go? And that's mm-hmm. the issue. Like, where, mm-hmm. where's it going to go? Like, it's the, we've got nowhere to put it right now. So that's the million dollar question. I want to know, and these are the questions that I'm going to ask this guy, like, what are the governments have in place? Like what are their like long-term and short-term goals around this? Because they can ban straws, you know, and the consumers and everybody around Vancouver feels awesome because straws have been banned. Yeah, that's good. But the reality is that flexible packaging is increasing year over year and there's not a solution or anywhere to put that. And that's if they would make some huge headway in, uh, in reducing um, our landfill and, uh, having a place to put it if they actually invested dollars there. But so hey, I don't know what's going on. Yeah. There's so much of it. If you think about it, yeah. you know, where does cardboard come from? How much energy does it take to make cardboard? Mm. Do you know how many boxes come to this house mm-hmm. and every yeah. else in the street? Yeah. Since we've all been ordering online. You know what I mean? The yeah. amount of fuel we burn to get boxes of the house. Yeah. Not just your packaging. Like we pack, we over package everything. everything. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. Like we I hate package it. a package. <clears throat> Yeah, when you get a delivery from Amazon and you've bought something little like a, a mouse or something like that and it comes in a big box and it's yeah. got a little bit of bubble wrap and you're like, what yeah. the heck? Like if they yeah. just run out of their size yeah. box to ship it. But, uh, exactly. And at that yeah. point, you save the too, bubble. Right? I mean, it just, yeah. you look at it, you're thinking, yeah. come yeah. on, guys. I, yeah. I, now, and now what am I going to do with the box? Yeah. I know. Right? You know, so you, you, you either cut it up, you recycle it, but you're thinking, like, where's this all going? I don't know. Like, you know, we, we consume so much stuff. Mm-hmm. Like we just, it's yeah. crazy. And then the other thing as well, and I like, I don't have that n- much knowledge on it as, or a level of knowledge to comment on it for everybody else to listen to. But a lot of our recycling gets shipped offshore. I know. And it gets taken away because we don't have the capacity to deal with the volume of recycling. And then there was a case where we got a heap returned. Like, was it from Vietnam the Philippines, or no, the, the Philippines? Philippines. The Philippines yeah. sent it, it all sat back. there for like 90 days and yes. then, the, and then yeah. it started to stink the place up and then, out of embarrassment, we took it yeah. back, basically. And there's yes. other places where we right. sent, yeah. and they burn yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, which thinking, is well, what they do. Here. Yeah, that's yes. So, and I think there there was a CTV news reporter or something like that that put a tracker inside a bag just to see where it would end up, and it's been sitting in a warehouse for months. Like, there's just we just don't have the capacity to deal with all we, it. Yeah, I, I think that's just it, though. Like, yeah, and sort of what I was asking before, like even like locally. Like if I wanted to source local packaging, I guess there's really no such thing 
as local packaging per se. No, I mean, there are local printers, like there's EPAC, which is I our competitor. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, so they've got to buy their raw, like their roll stock to like their substrates mm-hmm. to print Comes onto. From somewhere else, yeah. Well, there's WinPack, which is a converter in um, Saskatchewan. And they they actually like blow the plastic and turn it into roll stock and you know make it. But they're oh, like really? I said, they're buying the the, the plastic, the palletized yeah, yeah. plastic. They're buying all of that from China because we just don't have that here. So yeah. somewhere along the chain, as soon as China decides that they want to really disrupt the world or whatever, whoever decides that they want to really make some disruptions in the world and and shut further things down, yeah, we're in real trouble here. You know, I think the world's in trouble at some stage because we've just taken so much offshore. But yeah, man, it's a it's a huge issue. Well, yeah. We're taking it offshore and we put it onto one shore. Yeah, which is even a more which is even a worse problem. It's not that yeah. it's not that it's not that we did a great job as a world to spread it. Yeah, we spread it over the second, you know, the third largest country in the world, which is China. But it's one country. Yeah, like you got you got one guy holding a lot of cards. It's not. Yeah. Oh, no. It's not bright. No, like it's just really not smart. No, so we use manufacturers in China, Taiwan, South Korea. So they're our primary, um, yeah, okay. primary manufacturers, yeah. and we will basically fit the product or the like, basically the needs of our clients and what they're trying to achieve with the right manufacturer based right. on what their specialties are. So yeah, I mean, we have got some amazing relationships with our partner in um, Taiwan. And, um, but they have really high MOQs. So like our client, like, um, Terra Breads over here is one of our clients and yeah. their volume is insane. And like, I'm really lucky they're in my, I've got them in my portfolio of business. So it's, it's looking really good at the moment, but, um, yeah, so we can only put so much business towards those guys because their MOQs are great, so great. But, um, you know, the value of working with partners in China is their MOQs are really low. So I can get yeah, somebody yeah. into a fully customized so bag for a thousand pieces, you know, like a well, you did it pieces. for us. Like we, we yeah. ours was a small run. Yeah, and I should have said this during the show, but it's never been a better time to actually get into a fully customized and printed pouch. Like that entry to barrier to entry has never been so right. low. It's so easy to do it. There's really no excuse anymore. Well, when you know? we started doing yeah. it, I was talking to Spencer. I said, "Buddy, don't bother. We're never going to be able to afford no. a preprint." Yeah, I said we might be able to afford a preprint bag, yeah. and we'll sticker Just put a label on labels, it. Yeah. right? I yeah. said, buddy, how are we going to, and it came with the cost. I thought, okay, shit, I guess I got that wrong. Yeah. Damn no, it's not that bad at all. It. Yeah. But, you know, at the end of the day, like pre COVID, the costs have gone up significantly. It's amazing. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. but yeah. Anyway, gents. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. Well, lovely chatting with you both. Nice to yeah. actually have a chat with you as well, Phil. Yeah. yeah I know. Thanks, Hayden. This is no amazing. Worries. Yeah. We'll next no food exacts. Yeah, it's you will. Off, Actually, off January's is January's has been canceled. This one's canceled. Hasn't it? That yeah. Was Friday, last Friday, right? Or this yeah. Friday? I don't know. I, I sort of glazed next over one I think it. Is February. Awesome. We'll have lunch together. That sounds good. I still actually need to go to um, Commercial Drive and have a coffee with you there. Anytime, man. Go, yeah. Listen, I have a coffee anywhere. Are you kidding me? Let's do it. <laughs> that you well, do some not have to like, Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I could definitely do coffee. For the opportunity to chat, Thanks, I really man. appreciate Take it. Care. See you. Take care. Take care, Hood. Okay, Take care, Bye. Bye. Cool. You're gonna have to figure out how to edit that one out. <laughs> Poor guy signed off. Oh no, that's okay. That's, no, awesome. that's okay. That's awesome. I love yeah, that's, it. That's easy. You know what? It's such a he's such a bright young man, right? I really like him. He's he's got his shit together. His podcast is cool. He's got some wicked guests on. You know. Yeah. And uh, he uh, uh, he hurt my feelings at every turn there. <laughs> I know. Again, though, but this is what you and I've been talking about. Uh, how, you know, we okay. If I want to do this, and I, I'm trying. Madonna, it's difficult. Yeah, like it, it's, it's difficult. hard to do this. Yeah, it's really difficult. Like it really is. I mean, it's nothing is easy. So, so the, this last part is even more upsetting, right? Like, really, sure this is. is really like so. So, like, like I kind of blew by it because I, I realized I probably should have just shut up about it. But you think we're talking about like, could we get to carbon neutral with NRC sachets? What the fuck does that mean? I don't know. Like, like, because I've never yeah. asked that question. So, like, so what if we get there? Like, what's don't the know. big whoop de do if if, well, if 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 they're gonna just end up in a landfill anyway yeah, and they're not like, going anywhere? What and the, the thing is, doing, right? And the like, thing is, for us right now, the reason you stay with this is it allows our product to be effervescent. It keeps it longer, so that the the the, the, the efficacy of the product yeah, yeah, yeah. remains high and integral. So you know, and at the same time, you're thinking, okay, that's important, and we really want to be that, but we also want to do our part. 
but as you can tell, if you did our part, you haven't done a part. You, you did this. All you did is to pay more. Yeah. And you didn't do anything. You didn't save anything because it's still going to happen in the landfill. It's really upsetting. That's bothersome. I mean, it's just, it really pisses me off more than anything, to be honest with you. Like, it just makes yeah. me angry in a lot of ways because there's got to be a better way to do this. Like, there really, it truly does have to be a better way to do this. Like, I don't understand how, why this is so freaking complicated. But it is. It really is. I'm really sad about it. Really, really sad about it. Yeah, I, I, I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not happy. With, it, it just puts less. <sighs> I don't want to say because we're going to both be doom and gloom but you know when you look at it and you think it's kind of pointless like what are you doing this for you're trying to do the right things and at the end of the day it's really not going to matter too much and that is just horrific and so cynical to say but that's sort of what it feels like okay we can't leave the listeners no <laughs> you got to cut this part out Fuck this part get rid of this man when Hayden said goodbye you shut off that part yeah i think so seriously think so. oh man you know what I do? What I did like about you know, he's the advertising. He's figured out. A, he's got his, his shit together on a few things there, right? Eh? Hang on, hang on one second. Let me just stop this.